So radio let's, I'm going to talk about two different things, radio frequency ablation and microwave ablation, which are really completely different things, technologies. Radio frequency ablation, just like the name says, is essentially a, a specific form of m monopolar uh, energy, tissue energy. It's, it's just the way it, the energy is delivered gives you completely different tissue effects. And the best way to illustrate it is this slide where on one side you're using a um, monopolar pencil. And as we all know, if you stick that in the liver and you activate that, you get a very small uh, coagulation zone. Really doesn't help very much in terms of ablation large, of, of destroying large tissue uh, volumes. On the contrary, what, what we do with uh, radio frequency ablation is our goal is to ablate large tissue volume. And to do that, we want a slow rise in temperature to prevent the insulation that forms with the co coagulum and the uh, carbonization. And I compare that to the barbecue effect. If you want to um, cook a steak on a barbecue, you use this. If you want to cook chicken, you use this. Think about it that way. So we're trying to cook chicken with um, radio frequency ablation. We are using alternating current, just like uh, we do with uh, most electrosurgical uh, energy systems in the operating room. But we use much higher uh, wattage, up to 250 watts. So we require larger return surfaces in order to prevent burns or heating up at the dispersive electrode. So you see a lot of systems have either very large or two return electrodes. And the algorithms in the ESU for radio frequency ablation prevent, are, are made to maintain low tissue temperature throughout the entire uh, tissue effect. Um, and we are try to avoid desiccation, which creates insulation and will prevent propagation of the uh, tissue effect, which, we, which is what we want to do. So it's a combination of tissue effects. So we have the direct ion back and forth effect, but most of what we see with radio frequency ablation is actually a thermal effect, a passive conduction of energy. And so we want to minimize or maximize the time in which the tissue still contains fluid. So we want to minimize the, the time it takes for uh, the impedance to rise in tissue. Electrosurgical systems for radio frequency ablation therefore use very low voltage and continuous low voltage around 60 volts. That prevents rapid tissue heating and desiccation and potential inadequate ablation zones. So this is sort of the principles, right? Ideally, what we get then at the tip of our probe is a nice symmetrical ablation zone that is active plus thermal passive extension. That never happens, okay? And the reason it never happens is that the effect depends on what kind of tissue is in there. So if you have very um, water-rich tumor tissue like neuroendocrine tumors, the effect actually is magnified. So you, you can actually get a completely non-symmetrical ablation zone based on what kind of tissue you ablate. If you ablate a colorectal metastasis that's very dry compared to the liver, you get inadequate ablation unless you ablate much larger volumes than the tumor itself. That's one aspect. And the other aspect is what we call the thermal sink. So if you have a blood vessel uh, that lies within your potentially symmetrical ablation zone, that blood vessel will take away heat. And what you get is very uh, non-symmetrical ablation zones. And you need to be aware of that when you use this technique. It depends on what tissue you use, uses it in, and what the water content of the tissue is. Again, high amounts of energy are used, up to 250 uh, watts. So those dispersive electrodes 
really at, are at the maximum of their capacity to disperse the energy. And if you change the uh, anatomic um, um, layout of these electrodes, if you lean on them with your elbow, you can actually cause burns because the energy will then focus on where you put your elbow and you get a skin burn. So you have to be aware of that. You also have to be very much aware where those electrodes are in relationship to your active side and if the patient has, for example, hip replacements, that really can cause problems. The indications for ablations can be summarized as palliative, unresectable lesions because of location, unresectable lesion because of metastatic disease, poor surgical candidates, and bridge to transplant. For the most part, they are not for cure, except if they are very small. An unintended injury from radiofrequency ablation can be from surface lesions where the heat is transferred to an adjacent organ like the stomach, the gallbladder, the uh, diaphragm, or the colon. If you're close to large vessels in the liver, you will create damage. Larger lesions over five centimeters are very difficult to completely ablate for the reasons I just showed you earlier. And multiple ablation in usually uh, increase the risk, uh, risk of incomplete ablations and then operator errors can cause skin burns. Let me quickly switch to microwave ablation. The main difference between radio frequency ablation and microwave ablation is the frequency at which these systems work. So microwave is, is also a alternating energy, but it's at 10,000 megahertz. So we're talking one basically one gigahertz, one million million hertz versus 500,000 hertz for um, our usual alternating cur current. So we are in the microwave oven range of energy. The main difference between the two, and that's a concept that is quite difficult to understand, I'll mention it anyway, is that the wavelength is very different. So in radio frequency energy, your wavelength is greater than 100 meters. Now think about the electrode that you use and how long that electrode is. The wave of the electrical energy is hundreds of times longer than the electrode that you use. In microwave, actually the wave is about the size of the tip of the electrode. So that causes a different tissue effect. It's not based on ionic back and forth kinetic, kinetic heating. It's actually based on water molecules, which are natural dipoles, are heated by rotation at 1,000 times, uh, at 1 million uh, times per second. And this creates the change in, in tissue uh, temperature. And this is what it looks like, ideally, when, when you look at a, uh, what the spatial distribution is at the tip of a magnetic uh, uh, microwave antenna. So it's dielectric heating. And uh, conceptually, that's how an antenna looks like. There's a generator, a flexible coaxial cable, just like the one that you use for your television. It has to be shielded a handpiece, then a rigid coaxial cable, and the radiation tip of the antenna, which is about a centimeter. And the radiation within that near field where the um, energy escapes from the antenna is creates a reproducible injury and a at the reproducible depth of tissue regardless of the change in surrounding tissue. So contrary to radio frequency ablation where energy can be diverted based on what tissue you ablate, microwave energy doesn't um, observe that at all. So with microwave energy, you can coagulate hepatic veins, you can injure the vena cava, you can make holes in the um, diaphragm 
because it disregards any interface. The design of these antennas are, are, are very complex, and it's very difficult, in fact, to create a spherical uh, zone of destruction, and there's a, that's where the companies have their, you know, their um, proprietary designs, but essentially they use chokes to um, modify the size or and spherical um, shape of the ablation zone. Again, there is no thermal think, sink, Microwave uh, energy is disregards any uh, changes in tissue um, consistency for the most part. Therefore, there's a higher risk of injury. You can create arteriovenous fistula, arteriobilious fistulas. You can create huge vascular injuries that create liver abscesses. On the other hand, you have a much better spherical ablation and with the radio frequency ablation. So I'm going to just give you a few questions to look at. If you look at the wavelength of microwave systems, what's true? And the wavelength of microwave systems is much shorter than that of radio frequency ablation, which makes the difference in the tissue effect. Which of the following is a principle of microwave energy delivery systems? Remember, dielectric tissue heating. And which of the following statements compares, comparing uh, radio frequency and microwave is true? The last one, right? Both systems can cause thermal injury to adjacent organs or overlying skin. Just to give you a flavor, thank you very much.